Epiphanius of Salamis Greek, Epiphanios c. 310-320-403 was Bishop of Salamis, Cyprus, at the end of the 4th century. He is considered a saint and a church father by both the Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches. He gained a reputation as a strong defender of Orthodoxy. He is best known for composing the Panarion, a very large compendium of the heresies up to his own time, full of quotations that are often the only surviving fragments of suppressed texts. According to Ernst Kitzinger, he seems to have been the first cleric to have taken up the matter of Christian religious images as a major issue, and there has been much controversy over how many of the quotations attributed to him by the Byzantine iconoclasts were actually by him. Regardless of this he was clearly strongly against some contemporary uses of images in the church. Life Epiphanius was born into a Christian Greek family in the small settlement of Basandic, near Eleutheropolis modern-day Beit Guvran, Israel, and lived as a monk in Egypt, where he was educated and came into contact with Valentinian groups. He returned to Palestine around 333, when he was still a young man, and he founded a monastery at Ad nearby, which is often mentioned in the polemics of Jerome with Rufinus and John, Bishop of Jerusalem. He was ordained a priest, and lived and studied as superior of the monastery in Ad that he founded for thirty years and gained much skill and knowledge in that position. In that position he gained the ability to speak in several tongues, including Hebrew, Syriac, Egyptian, Greek, and Latin, and was called by Jerome on that account Pentaglossus, five-tongued. His reputation for learning prompted his nomination and consecration as Bishop of Salamis, Cyprus, in 365 or 367, a post which he held until his death. He was also the Metropolitan of the Church of Cyprus. He served as bishop for nearly 40 years, as well as traveled widely to combat unorthodox beliefs. He was present at a synod in Antioch 376 where the Trinitarian questions were debated against the heresy of Apollinarianism. He upheld the position of Bishop Paulinus, who had the support of Rome, over that of Miletius of Antioch, who was supported by the Eastern Churches. In 382 he was present at the Council of Rome, again upholding the cause of Paulinus. Origenist controversy and death During a visit to Palestine in 394 or 395, while preaching in Jerusalem, he attacked Origen's followers and urged the Bishop of Jerusalem, John II, to condemn his writings. He urged John to be careful of the offense of images in the churches. He noted that when traveling in Palestine he went into a church to pray and saw a curtain with an image of Christ or a saint which he tore down. He told Bishop John that such images were «opposed» to our religion see below. This event sowed the seeds of conflict which erupted in the dispute between Rufinus and John against Jerome and Epiphanius. Epiphanius fueled this conflict by ordaining a priest for Jerome monastery at Bethlehem, thus trespassing on John's jurisdiction. This dispute continued during the 390s, in particular in the literary works by Rufinus and Jerome attacking one another. In 399, the dispute took on another dimension, when the bishop of Alexandria, Theophilus, who had initially supported John, changed his views and started persecuting Origenist monks in Egypt. As a result of this persecution, four of these monks, the so-called Tall Brothers, fled to Palestine, and then traveled to Constantinople, seeking support and spreading the controversy. John Chrysostom, Bishop of Constantinople, gave the monks shelter. Bishop Theophilus of Alexandria saw his chance to use this event to bring down his enemy Chrysostom. In 402 he summoned a council in Constantinople, and invited those supportive of his anti-Origenist views. Epiphanius, by this time nearly eighty, was one of those summoned, and began the journey to Constantinople. However, when he realized he was being used as a tool by Theophilus against Chrysostom, who had given refuge to the monks persecuted by Theophilus and who were appealing to the emperor, Epiphanius started back to Salamis, only to die on the way home in 403. The Curtain Incident Letter L.I. in Jerome's letters gives Jerome's Latin translation, made at Epiphanius's request, of his letter, originally in Greek from c. 394. 
from Epiphanius, Bishop of Salamis, in Cyprus, to John, Bishop of Jerusalem. See previous section for wider context. The final section covers the often quoted incident of the curtain, which unlike other passages attributed to Epiphanius and quoted by the iconoclasts, is accepted as authentic by modern scholars. 9. Moreover, I have heard that certain persons have this grievance against me, when I accompanied you to the holy place called Bethel, there to join you in celebrating the collect, after the use of the church, I came to a villa called Anablatha and, as I was passing, saw a lamp burning there. Asking what place it was, and learning it to be a church, I went in to pray, and found there a curtain hanging on the doors of the said church, dyed and embroidered. It bore an image either of Christ or of one of the saints, I do not rightly remember whose the image was. Seeing this, and being loath that an image of a man should be hung up in Christ's church contrary to the teaching of the scriptures, I tore it asunder and advised the custodians of the place to use it as a winding sheet for some poor person. They, however, murmured, and said that if I made up my mind to tear it, it was only fair that I should give them another curtain in its place. As soon as I heard this, I promised that I would give one, and said that I would send it at once. Since then there has been some little delay, due to the fact that I have been seeking a curtain of the best quality to give to them instead of the former one, and thought it right to send to Cyprus for one. I have now sent the best that I could find, and I beg that you will order the presbyter of the place to take the curtain which I have sent from the hands of the reader, and that you will afterwards give directions that curtains of the other sort—opposed as they are to our religion—shall not be hung up in any church of Christ. A man of your uprightness should be careful to remove an occasion of offence unworthy alike of the church of Christ and of those Christians who are committed to your charge. Beware of Palladius of Galatia. A man once dear to me, but who now sorely needs God's pity, for he preaches and teaches the heresy of Origen, and see to it that he does not seduce any of those who are entrusted to your keeping into the perverse ways of his erroneous doctrine. I pray that you may fare well in the Lord. Topic. Writings Topic. Topic. Panarian. Topic. His best known book is the Panarion which means medicine chest, also known as Adversus Heresies, against heresies, presented as a book of antidotes for those bitten by the serpent of heresy. Written between 374 and 377, it forms a handbook for dealing with the arguments of heretics. It lists, and refutes, 80 heresies, some of which are not described in any other surviving documents from the time. Epiphanius begins with the four mothers of pre-Christian heresy, barbarism, scythism, Hellenism, and Judaism, and then addresses the 16 pre-Christian heresies that have flowed from them, four philosophical schools, Stoics, Platonists, Pythagoreans and Epicureans, and 12 Jewish sects. There then follows an interlude, telling of the incarnation of the word. After this, Epiphanius embarks on his account of the sixty Christian heresies, from assorted Gnostics to the various Trinitarian heresies of the 4th century, closing with the Coloridians and Messalians. While Epiphanius often let his zeal come before facts, he admits on one occasion that he writes against the Origenists based only on hearsay Panarion, Epiphanius 71 The Panarion is a valuable source of information on the Christian Church of the 4th century. It is also an important source regarding the early Jewish Gospels such as the Gospel according to the Hebrews circulating among the Ebionites and the Nazarenes, as well as the followers of Serenthus and Marenthus. One unique feature of the Panarion is in the way that Epiphanius compares the various heretics to different poisonous beasts, going so far as to describe in detail the animal's characteristics, how it produces its poison, and how to protect oneself from the animal's bite or poison. For example, he describes his enemy Origen as a toad noisy from too much moisture which keeps croaking louder and louder. He compares the Gnostics to a particularly dreaded snake, with no pangs. The Ebionites, a Christian sect that followed Jewish law, were described by Epiphanius as a monstrosity with many shapes, who practically formed the snake-like shape of the mythical many-headed hydra in himself. In all, Epiphanius describes 50 animals, usually one per sect. Another feature of the Panarion is the access its earlier sections provide to lost works, notably Justin Martyr's work on heresies, the Greek of Irenaeus, against heresies, and Hippolytus' Syntagma. The Panarion was first translated into English in 1987 and 1990. 
Topic: Other works. Topic: His earliest known work is the Ancoratus, the well-anchored man, which includes arguments against Arianism and the teachings of Origen. Aside from the polemics by which he is known, Epiphanius wrote a work of biblical antiquarianism, called, for one of its sections, On Weights and Measures Perimetron Chistepan. It was composed in Constantinople for a Persian priest, in 392, and survives in Syriac, Armenian, and Georgian translations. This last is found in Shatbird Ms. 1141 along with Physiologus and Degemus. The first section discusses the canon of the Old Testament and its versions, the second of measures and weights, and the third, the geography of Palestine. The texts appear not to have been given a polish but consist of rough notes and sketches, as Alan A. Shaw, a modern commentator, concluded. Nevertheless Epiphanius's work on metrology was important in the history of measurement. Another work, on the Twelve Gems De Gemis, survives in a number of fragments, the most complete of which is the Georgian, the letter written by Epiphanius to John, Bishop of Jerusalem, in 394 and preserved in Jerome's translation, is discussed above. The collection of homilies traditionally ascribed to a Saint Epiphanius, Bishop are dated in the late 5th or 6th century and are not connected with Epiphanius of Salamis by modern scholars, such was Epiphanius's reputation for learning that the physiologist, the principal source of medieval bestiaries, came to be widely falsely attributed to him. Works The Panarion of Epiphanius of Salamis, Book 1, Sex 1 46, Frank Williams, Translator, 1987, E.J. Brill, Leiden ISBN 90-04-07926-2 The Panarion of Epiphanius of Salamis, Book 2 and 3 Sex 47-80, De Fide Frank Williams, Translator, 1993 E.J. Brill, Leiden ISBN 90-04-09898-4 The Panarion of Saint Epiphanius, Bishop of Salamis Philip R. Amidon Translator, 1990, Oxford University Press, New York. This translation contains selections rather than the full work. ISBN 0 19 4 Epiphanius's treatise on weights and measures, the Syriac version, James Elmer Dean, ed. 1935, Chicago. English translation of On Weights and Measures, available at http colon slash 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 father slash epiphanius underscore weights underscore o three underscore text. htm closing square bracket. Epiphanius de Gemis, the old Georgian version and the fragments of the Armenian version, ed. Robert Pierpont Blake, Davis, H. 1934. London, Christophers. Epiphanius von Salamis, Uber dies Wolf Stein im Hohepriesterlichen Brustschild, de Duodecim Gemis Rationalis. Nach dem Codex Vaticanus Borgianus Arminus 31 Herausgegeben und Übersetzt by Felix Albrecht and Arthur Manukian, Gorges Eastern Christian Studies 37, 2014, Gorges Press, Piscataway, ISBN 978 1 4632 0279 8, German edition. Notes Topic. References Topic. Kitzinger, Ernst. The Cult of Images in the Age Before Iconoclasm. Dumbarton Oaks Papers, Vol. 8, 1954, pp. 83-150, Dumbarton Oaks, Trustees for Harvard University, JSTOR Kim, Young Richard. Epiphanius of Cyprus, Imagining an Orthodox World. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 2015. Jacobs, Andrew S. Epiphanius of Cyprus, A Cultural Biography of Late Antiquity. Christianity in Late Antiquity. Oakland, University of California Press, 2016. Topic. External links Topic. Saint Epiphanius of Salamis Orthodox Icon and Synaxarian Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Epiphanius of Salamis. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Epiphanius, on Biblical Weights and Measures English translation of Assyriac text 
Some excerpts from the Panarion The Panarion of Epiphanius of Salamis Book 1 Sex 1-46 Letter from Epiphanius, Bishop of Salamis, in Cyprus, to John, Bishop of Jerusalem Opera Omnia by Migni Patrologia Graeca with analytical indexes Stephen Kraft Gorenson, The Joseph of Tiberius Episode in Epiphanius, Studies in Jewish and Christian Relations 1990. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed., 1913. Epiphanius of Salamis. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton.